From two sky bridges overburdened with the weight of too many people to a bridge that was hastily constructed to meet a deadline, the reasons for these terrible bridge disasters scattered throughout U.S. history are more varied than you think. It's a little terrifying to think about how much we're really at the mercy of technology, but that's exactly what disaster expert and historian Edward Tenner does all day. After the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, he told the Washington Post, this might have been a case where there were just an unlikely series of failures. But given the potential for damage like this, there should have been more redundancy. There shouldn't have been one point of failure that could lead to a catastrophe. And that's what was pretty immediately reported. A shockingly massive cargo ship called the Dali lost power, collided with a bridge pier, and sent the entire thing crashing into the water below. Amid the finger-pointing that inevitably followed, one of the things that was widely condemned was the inability of infrastructure to keep up with implementing security measures to guard against collisions of cargo ships of seemingly ever-increasing size. Casualties included six construction workers who were on the bridge at the time of the collapse, and it was also very quickly reported that it was going to have devastating, far-reaching impacts on the U.S. economy, from the national level all the way down to the local. A lot of households around here are dependent uh, on the ports to make their living. And again, you know, if those ships can't get in, they can't get paid. The 1993 collapse of Alabama's Big Bayou Cannot Bridge only happened because of a strange set of circumstances, bad weather, and delays. It started with a towboat and six barges that were being piloted along the Mobile River as the spell of bad weather made visibility next to nothing. The towboat pilot ended up getting diverted into the Big Bayou Cannot, and in the process of trying to find somewhere to wait out the weather, the towboat collided with the supports of a railway bridge. The boat didn't collapse the bridge, but it did bend the supports. Still, things were about to get worse. A train that was supposed to have passed half an hour before had been held up by an air conditioning malfunction and ended up crossing the bridge eight minutes after the collision. As such, the entire thing collapsed into the mud and water. By the time rescue workers had cleared the wreckage, 47 people were dead and more than 100 were injured. As one investigator noted, well, I think this, like almost all the accidents that we investigate, was preventable. When a devastating earthquake hit Oakland in 1989, the majority of deaths happened on the Cypress Street Viaduct. The quake was a 7.1 on the Richter scale and resulted in a bridge failure so catastrophic that it took 90 hours for the last survivor to be rescued. In the end, accounts vary as to how many people were killed. Some sources say 35 died on the bridge, while others say the death toll was 42. The bridge had been built in a way that was supposed to help reduce traffic. There were two levels to the little over one mile bridge, which consisted of five lanes on both levels and passed over more ground level traffic. Built in 1956, it would later be determined that it simply hadn't been built in a way that would withstand the stress of a major earthquake. The top deck collapsed onto the lower one, leaving rescuers and the nearby community to build makeshift ladders in an attempt to reach survivors. One of them, Chris Mitchell, told KPIX News that he was trapped between the bridges. He said, I just happened to be in between two cross members, and there was enough space for me to live. It's easy to forget that not all bridges cross rivers and roads. One of the deadliest bridge collapses in U.S. history actually involved concrete sky bridges built across the lobby of a massive Hyatt Regency Hotel in Kansas City, Missouri. It happened on July 17, 1981, as couples gathered with plans to laugh and twirl the night away at an event in the hotel lobby. Spectators took to the second and fourth floor sky bridges, until there were simply too many spectators. I knew exactly what happened before anybody told me, because like I said, when I heard that metal and concrete go, I knew. Local news crews were already there to film the dancing couples that day when the moorings securing the sky bridges in place failed and the structures collapsed on the dancers, killing 114 and injuring more than 200. Rescue workers spent hours recovering bodies and cutting survivors free, sometimes amputating limbs in order to do so. It was later discovered that the carnage had been easily avoidable. When the bridges were built, the lower one was anchored to the higher one, without taking into consideration that the higher bridge was now supporting twice the weight it had been built for. Eerily similar to the Francis Scott Key Bridge incident, the collapse of Tampa Bay's Sunshine Skyway in 1980 claimed the lives of 35 after being hit by a cargo ship that had gotten disoriented in bad weather. One of those interviewed at the time was a paramedic named Jay Hirsch, who had been crossing the bridge as it happened. He recalled, I thought at first it was thunder. Then something hit the bridge so hard it knocked my car out of its lane. I kept going till I got across. When I looked back, I saw it. My God, the bridge had gone down. Bizarrely, two other rescue workers who had been on site that day, Michael Betts and Robert Riola, were bridge inspectors for the Department of Transportation. They'd been on their way to inspect the bridge. Instead, they found themselves helping to recover the bodies of the drowned, pulling people from their bus seats and swimming with them to the surface several times. There were no survivors. Decades later, Riola said he was still haunted by one thing he saw in the wreckage, a diaper bag. Of all of the deadliest bridge disasters in the world, it's West Virginia's Silver Bridge that has perhaps the strangest history. 
It was located in Point Pleasant, and yes, that's where the bizarre cryptid known as Mothman is said to reside. But first, let's talk about the bridge. When it opened in 1928, it was a huge deal. It connected West Virginia and Gallipolis, Ohio, with a pretty revolutionary structure. Fast forward to 1967, and the bridge collapsed and killed 46 people. It was later found to be the fault of a single iron bar that had corroded, snapped, and started a chain reaction that devastated the area. Understandably, the entire area struggled with grief, loss, and that age-old question, why? And here's where things get weird. Mothman sightings had started just the previous year, with countless people convinced that they had not, as local wildlife experts insisted, seen a sandhill crane, but a mysterious winged monster. John A. Keel's book, The Mothman Prophecies, suggested that the appearance of the Mothman was a sort of otherworldly herald, warning of imminent disaster. Keel claimed that there were other warnings issued too. With the Silver Bridge tragedy as so-called proof, the Mothman mythos was firmly cemented into one of the U.S.'s favorite cryptids. Keel's book was even adapted into a 2002 film starring Richard Gere and Laura Linney. It was right here. All I could see were these two red eyes. On August 7, 1904, the Dry Creek Bridge collapsed as a train passed over it, close to Eden Station in Colorado. Of the 125 passengers, between 80 and 100 were assumed dead. The collapsed bridge had plunged the train into the muddy, rushing creek below the river. The scene was so chaotic and the river was running so violently that several train cars were missing and presumed to have ended up downstream. The creek bed was an arroyo, an area that was dry most of the time but flooded after storms. An investigation following the collapse confirmed that the bridge had been competently built and been in service for years. What exactly happened is still up for debate today. It's believed that a wave hit the train as it crossed over the bridge, and that wave may or may not have also been carrying the remains of a bridge that had broken free and collapsed upstream. Floodwaters carried the train cars away with them, drowning most inside. The Bussey Bridge disaster in 1887 is another incident that will forever live in infamy. When inspectors from MIT were sent to the scene, they chalked the bridge collapse up to a few things. Faulty materials, bad welding that had finally broken under the strain, a design that was destined to fail, and a complete lack of oversight. The investigation was also quick to point out that recommendations for upgrades had been made in 1881 and were completely disregarded. Part of the problem wasn't just the bridge's construction, but also a strange part of the design that hid vital components that needed regular safety inspections. It was only once the bridge had collapsed, killing approximately 23 people and injuring 100, that those hidden compartments were found to be wildly defective. The Ashtabula train disaster was an especially awful incident. Two engines, the Socrates and the Columbia, were pulling a train from Buffalo, New York to Cleveland, Ohio on December 29, 1876. The lead engine, Socrates, had just made it across the bridge spanning the Ashtabula River when the bridge collapsed. Nearly everyone on board was killed, around 80 people in total. Nearly 50 of the recovered bodies were mangled beyond recognition. The collapse led to a massive investigation to try to determine why the 11-year-old bridge had suddenly and catastrophically failed and whether or not similar bridges were in danger. It was eventually ruled that there had been defects present in the bridge from the time of construction, and inspections that had been carried out had every chance to catch the problems. It remains one of the deadliest train accidents in history. The Truesdale Bridge tragedy is kind of the ultimate irony. When it was built, it was designed and approved by a city that was sick and tired of wooden bridges collapsing and getting washed away by floodwaters. In 1868, they approved new plans, in spite of the fact that alarm bells had already been raised by those who thought this new design wasn't the best idea. Turns out, they were right. Four years after the bridge was built, it collapsed. When it happened, the iron bars folded in on themselves, trapping people underwater in an iron cage. And there were a lot of them mostly women and children walking in a baptismal procession from the church to the river. Several other Truesdale-designed bridges had collapsed in the previous years, and it was widely condemned from the beginning. Engineers pointed out that the bridge's foundation was way too lightly built to support the actual bridge, and investigations into the incident generally agreed. Truesdale, meanwhile, continued to defend his bridge and the design. Of the 200-odd people who were on the bridge, 46 died. There are plenty of occasions when taking shortcuts might be perfectly acceptable. When building a bridge, not so much. But that's exactly what happened in the lead-in to the collapse of Missouri's Gascony Bridge. In a nutshell, the Pacific Railroad had taken on the task of connecting St. Louis and the Pacific Coast. There were all kinds of delays, and corners got cut ahead of an inaugural celebratory train journey that would carry 600 people from St. Louis to Jefferson City. There were two bridges that the train would cross, and one was erected hurriedly as a temporary measure. The bridge collapsed under the weight of that celebratory train, and 31 out of 600 people died in the wreck. Hundreds more were injured. The backlash was swift, and although the exact details were never agreed upon, it seems as though the train's speed, coupled with uneven weight distribution and rushed construction, all came together to end in tragedy. 
On the plus side, the disaster went a long way in pushing through requirements to have trained engineers overseeing future construction. 